All right, Faulkner, I know you and I haven't always seen eye to eye, but you're on today's thumbnail. Does that mean we're cool now? Hell no, it doesn't. You're only here because the other flying gym leaders have worse sprites for the layout. Don't forget that you only got this position because your dad gave it to you. To me, you're always going to be the spoiled, rotten, good for nothing, Nepo baby j As new trainers spread their wings and enter the Pokemon world, they soar throughout the region, only nesting to challenge the high-flying competitors known as Gym Leaders. Like birds of prey perched atop the tallest mountains, Gym Leaders rule the roost in terms of Pokemon battles. Only the earliest of birds can overcome these eagle-eyed trainers and make away with the proverbial worm that is a Gym Badge. However, sometimes it seems these bird brains had their wings clipped and their competency as a trainer has simply flown the coop. This could be due to their team synergy, their movesets, or simply their cuckoo-ass choices in Pokemon. But for the most part, I've noticed that many gym leaders come up short in showcasing their specialized type. While birds of a feather flock together, it doesn't mean all their ducks are going to be in a row. In non-bird terms, most of their type-themed teams don't tend to highlight their type very well. Because of this, I've decided to embark on a journey to craft the perfect gym leader for every type in the game. I'm going type by type to build a full team of six Pokemon, with thought out movesets, abilities, items, and more than anything, an emphasis on representing that type as best as possible. Last time we covered the grass type, and today we'll add another feather to our cap by taking to the skies to talk about one of the most unique types in the game, flying. Wow, are you still here after all those puns? Guess you're invested. Before we jump in, let's quickly go over my guidelines for building these teams. This team will not include Legendaries, Mythicals, Ultra Beasties, Paradox Pokemon, and any one of the generational gimmicks. In addition, Pokemon will not be repeated between teams, though they may pop up as an honorable mention in their type's other video. As for what is included, basically everything else. All learned moves, including level up, TMs, egg moves, and even ones removed in recent generations. Pokemon can also have any of their abilities and any held item. I'll also do my best to keep the items pretty diverse. Although that said, six heavy-duty boots isn't looking so bad. Lastly, these videos have two goals. Build a diverse and well-balanced monotype team, and build a team that represents its type as best as possible. With all that out of the way, let's talk about the flying type. For quite a long time, flying was strictly a secondary typing. It took until Gen 5 when we got Tornadus for us to get a primary flying type, as well as a pure flying type for that matter. And while a few have been introduced since then, primary flying types are still one of the rarest groups of Pokémon out there. So, what gives? As opposed to types like Grass, Fire, and Water, which are dependent on a Pokémon's ability to manipulate a certain element, if you in the sky, you is probably fly. Ying type. Let me put it this way. If Pokémon had to fill out a survey to get their types, the only question on the flying section would be, do you fly? And are you a bird? If you answered yes to either of those two questions, then congratulations, you're a flying type. If not, then you're likely one of the few that had other types take precedent, meaning you would get honorary flying status with the ability Levitate. The other piece to this, and part of what makes this video so challenging in particular, is that most flying types are more their other type than they are flying. While Pokémon like Pelipper, Halucha, and Tropius are all flying, their other types are probably what takes precedence in your mind. They're water, fighting, and grass types who all just happen to be flying. So for this video, the aspect of representing the type as best as possible is a bit more challenging than usual. But enough about that, let's get into the type itself. In regards to stats, flying is quite underwhelming. Between ranking 12th in HP and 2nd to last in both defense and special defense, it's up there with Bug as having some of the worst defensive stats in the game. And along with a poor showing in attack and a barely above average special attack ranking, the only saving grace for these high flyers is their incredible speed, which comes in at 4th. While subpar overall, I don't think these stats are surprising. Most flying types are fast because, well, you know, they fly. And I've never been one to know Pidgey as a defensive powerhouse. Although ironically, some of the best flying type Pokémon in competitive are defensive, so, you know, take these stat rankings with just a grain of salt. Moving along, compared to Grass's abysmal type matchups from last video, flying is about as average as can be. Defensively, it has three weaknesses, rock, electric, and ice. And it also has three resistances in fighting, bug, and grass, along with one of the best immunities out there to ground. Offensively, it hits the same types it resists for super effective damage, and it's weak against, again, three types, rock, electric, and steel. 
All the previous types I've done had notable type matchups, whether great ones or terrible ones, but flying is the first type that's truly balanced. Just like the massive wingspan of a Mega Salamence keeping it balanced in the sky, like a giant space croissant. The last thing I want to touch on before we jump into the team is the gym leader themselves. I haven't done it much in previous videos, but I want to make it a habit to talk about this hypothetical gym leader and mention the traits, attributes, and mannerisms I see them having. While it may not have a massive influence on the team itself, I also think the perfect gym leader for a type would be someone who embodies that type. For example, to quickly run through our previous five types, the normal gym leader would be your average Joe. A pretty unassuming guy, but someone who has a lot more depth to them than you may think, just like how the normal type has a lot more to it than someone may realize. To bring up my pun from last time, extraordinary. The bug leader would basically be a Pokemon superfan, somebody so into collecting that they've made it a point to show you how one of the worst types can actually be one of the best, if you have the right knowledge. Honestly, they'd probably be a bit annoying. Some might say, a pest. The Ice Gym Leader would basically just be Grusha. Super chill, pun actually not intended there. Cool, calm, collected, but also pretty guarded. The Ice type is more defensive than people think, and maybe you could say the same for its Gym Leader. The Poison Gym Leader would just be straight up obnoxious. I wouldn't be surprised if they got their position through some sneaky underhanded shit. And I guarantee they would use the most annoying playstyle they could. Someone that can truly be described as toxic. As for Grass, I picture somebody a bit wiser, kind of like Ramos was supposed to be, but also someone not on Death's Door. And now for the Flying Gym Leader, I'll give you bits and pieces of their personality as we move throughout the team. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more Pokemon content. My dog and I would both appreciate it. And come join my Discord while you're at it. It's a pretty fly place to be. Just like with the Bug and Ice type videos, I'm almost certain a lot of you are immediately worried about Stealth Rock. While I don't think an in-game gym leader team needs to worry about hazards that much, I also recognize that a quote-unquote perfect gym leader of a type weak to rocks would likely have a response for them. And that's where our lead comes in, the Soundwave Pokémon, Noivern. As one of the fastest flying types out there, Noivern can use one of its many support moves to get this battle off to a strong start. For a while I debated moves like U-Turn, Super Fang, or even Switcheroo on the moveset, but with Stealth Rocks being a likely opening move from the opponent, our first move helps us shut that down immediately. Taunt, preventing the use of status moves. While the intent is to block hazards, Taunt can be used to stop anything from setup to status to screens. And from there, Noivern goes full out offensive. Hurricane is our strongest flying stab, and while I hate this move's 70% accuracy, I also know at least one of our Pokémon should have it. Third is Draco Meteor, rounding out our dual stab and giving us a hard hit on the things that resist Hurricane. Except for Steel types, but with our last move Heat Wave, we have an answer for those as well. While I think U-Turn would have been beneficial, especially after halting their momentum with Taunt, I do think our Gym Leader would opt for full offense. One of the tropes I see for this Gym Leader is this carefree, whimsical, almost erratic personality. I guess you could say that they're a bit… flighty. While it may be smarter to get Switch Initiative with U-Turn, I think our Gym Leader would get any damage off she could before bringing in the next threat. And yes, that's she, because outside of Larry, every Flying-type specialist is female. Well, at least the ones that matter. To finish up our Neuburn set, its ability would be Infiltrator, simply because the other options aren't nearly as good for an in-game team. And as for an item, since every attack we have is under 100% accuracy, Wide Lens. Is it the best item for it? Probably not. But would our flightiest f gym leader think it's a good idea? Hell yeah. Don't worry, not every set is going to be weird just for the sake of our gym leader narrative. In fact, our next team member might have the most basic set imaginable. The Raven Pokémon, Corviknight. Ever since this bird's introduction, it's become one of the premier flying types in the competitive scene. Partially because of its amazing typing, which means it's not weak to rock or ice, and partially because of its well-balanced stats which allow it to be a nice defensive pivot. And with a number of helpful support moves, Corviknight will be an amazing glue to help hold this team together. Its first move, and probably the most important, is Roost, keeping it healthy throughout the battle. Next is Defog. While Taunt on Noivern is a nice way to prevent hazards, this team would still benefit greatly from hazard removal. And with one of the two main options for removal being a Flying-type staple, it was an easy fit on the moveset. Next is U-Turn. As a bulkier pivot, U-Turn allows Corviknight to switch out into one of our more offensive team members, keeping up momentum. As for the last move, I don't think Flying Stab is necessary on Corviknight, so I'd either go with Iron Head for Stab, or Body Press to take advantage of our high defense. 
Of the two, Body Press is arguably better, as it can hit every type flying typically struggles with. If you really wanted to, you could replace Defog with Iron Defense to make Body Press even scarier, but this team has plenty of other Pokémon that specialize in dealing damage. As for ability, Mirror Armor is the best option we have, as it reflects the stat-lowering effects of moves and abilities back on the user. And as for an item, Leftovers are the best way to take full advantage of our bulk. Like I said, a very basic set, but an effective one nonetheless. My only regret about Corviknight is that being on this team means it won't be considered for the Steel-type team, but between the two I think it was much more necessary here. And I guess we could always use Corviknight at home if it comes down to it. <sighs> I really hate Skarmory. As I said, Corviknight is a bulky pivot that's meant to set things up for our more offensive team members. And our next Pokémon is arguably the best offensive option we have. The wrestling Pokémon, Halucha. <laughs> First and foremost, while part of me really wants to use Halucha's signature move Flying Press as it's the only move with the unique trait of being two types at once, it's simply not worth putting on the move set. Unfortunately, two types aren't always better than one. But that's fine, because Halucha has access to a ton of other tools. While its stats aren't anything crazy, it's Halucha's setup potential along with these stats that makes it truly scary. Part of this is due to its ability Unburden, where its speed doubles if it loses its held item. Normally you wouldn't anticipate losing an item, but with tons of single-use things like berries and gems, we can take advantage of Unburden very easily. The best item for Halucha would be the White Herb, which restores all lowered stats the moment they drop. This pairs perfectly with our first move, Close Combat. The moment we use Close Combat, we'll use our White Herb to restore our stats and then basically outspeed everything. And it also means we can use our next move to its full extent, Acrobatics. Normally 55 base power, Acrobatics doubles to 110 if the user isn't holding an item. Wow, it's almost like we planned this. Our third move would be Throat Chop, mostly just to hit the things Acrobatics and Close Combat don't. And as for our last move, Swords Dance. If Halucha can manage both a Swords Dance and the Unburdened boost, it's safe to say the opposing trainer will be flying south for the winter. Overall, I love how Halucha fits on this team. Its type is helpful offensively and a bit defensively, and it can be really threatening once set up. Plus, this one's way better than whatever the hell Corina was using. What? What the fuck? I've mentioned it already, but it was quite the challenge to pick Pokemon for this team. I always try to cover our weaknesses thoroughly, but between the flying types better suited for their other teams, and the ones not good enough to be considered at all, certain calls had to be made and one of those calls is to choose a Pokémon that's good, even if its typing doesn't help us out a ton. The Jubilee Pokémon, Togekiss. Also side note, the Jubilee Pokémon? That's so f***ing cute. Togekiss's reputation precedes itself. While part of it is due to the hell on earth that is Serene Grace flinching with Air Slash, part of it is due to its incredible stat spread, bulky enough to take a few hits while also capable of dishing out good damage. And the set I have today takes advantage of both. But not for me. With Togekiss's great natural bulk and weaknesses to the types you would expect someone to bring to the flying gym, it can very quickly become very scary. Especially if you have the move Tailwind. While a great move to support the team in general, it can give Togekiss the speed advantage over almost anything, which also allows for the hell on earth that is Air Slash, which has a 60% chance to flinch with Serene Grace. Next up is Aura Sphere, which along with Air Slash allows us to hit every individual type for neutral or super effective damage. And for the final move, Roost gives Togekiss the ability to continue its reign of terror for as long as possible. I recognize this may not be the best moveset to give Togekiss, and you're probably thinking Thunder Wave is better overall than Tailwind. And while you may be right, I also think you should put the game down because implementing those kinds of strategies have been known to cause prolonged damage to your ability to have a good time playing a game. Besides, Tailwind is a cool flying move to highlight, and odds are this flighty gym leader would run it anyways. Back in Pokemon Black and White, there was this cool feature within the Striaton Gym, where the gym leader you faced was dependent on the starter you chose. This isn't anything new for Pokemon, as it's the same concept as your rival picking the starter that's good against yours. Or in recent gens, the worse option. Oh Arceus, how far have we fallen? Anyways, this is the only time this feature has been used in a gym, and while I can understand why, it's a mechanic I think is perfect for this gym. And that's all thanks to the dancing Pokémon, Oricorio. Before you go, Really Shep, Oricorio? If it's good enough for Larry, it's good enough for me. Oricorio can be one of four forms. The electric type Pom Pom style, the fire type Bile style, the psychic type Pau style, and the ghost type Sensu style. 
Instead of having to pick one form for this team, why don't we use all of them? What if, and bear with me now, what if when you went into the gym battle, the game checked your team to see which Oricorio matched up better into it? Maybe you brought a lot of steel types? It's Bile style. Maybe you're running a couple water types? Instead, it's Pom Pom style. This would kind of be similar to the anime, where gym leaders have been shown picking the appropriate team based on how many badges the challenger has. And what works great about this strategy is that Oricorio itself can basically run the same set no matter what the type is. With its signature move Revelation Dance changing type based on its form, Oricorio will always have Stab for its primary typing, which would also be boosted by its held item, the Plate for that type, either the Zap, Flame, Mind, or Spooky Plate. Pair that with Air Slash to round out our dual stab, Quiver Dance to boost our stats, and either Substitute to further setup, or Roost to keep it healthy, and Oricorio not only provides a fun gimmick, but can also be a threatening late game sweeper if played right. And that's the thing, Oricorio would be this team's ace, meaning the biggest threats to our team would likely be weakened by the time it comes out, leaving Oricorio to dance its way to victory. However, that still leaves us with a question. If Oricorio is our last team member, what comes right before it? Well, that actually depends on the Oricorio. While I could have put a static member in slot 5 like I did with the first 4 slots, instead it will depend on which form of Oricorio was picked. And to avoid giving you 4 lengthy descriptions, let's speedrun them. First off, paired with the electric type Pom Pom style, we have the Battlecry Pokemon, Hisuian Braviary. Ability is Tinted Lens to take advantage of any resisted hits, and our moveset is Esper Wing, a stab move that raises speed by one stage, Air Slash for dual stab, Shadow Ball for coverage, and Calm Mind to boost our stats. Next up, paired with the fire type Bile style, we have the Blimp Pokemon, Drift Blimp. Ability would be Aftermath to potentially deal some damage upon going down, and our moves are Shadow Ball for stab, Air Slash for more stab, Thunderbolt for coverage, and Calm Mind to boost our stats. Third, paired with the Psychic type Pau style, is the Scorching Pokemon, Talonflame. Ability is Gale Wings because, duh, it's the flying type team, and our moveset is Brave Bird to hit hard, Flare Blitz for dual stab, U-Turn for switch initiative, and Roost for longevity. Lastly, paired with the Ghost type Sensu style is the Frigate Bird Pokemon, Kilowattrel. Ability is Volt Absorb, which genuinely helps out this team a ton, and our moves are Hurricane to hit hard, Thunderbolt for dual stab, U-Turn for switch initiative, and Roost for longevity. And all four of them would be holding heavy duty boots, because yes, I really don't want to hear y'all mention Stealth Rock. Although now I've mentioned it so often that, of course you're going to mention it. As you could tell, there were some clear parallels between these choices. Braviary and Driftblim are both Calm Mind Sweepers, and Talonflame and Kilowattrel are meant to hit fast, hit hard, heal, and pivot. And if you didn't notice, these four also match the four forms of Oricorio, and they're paired up to create unique type combos regardless of which Oricorio is picked. Psychic Electric, Ghost Fire, Fire Psychic, and Electric Ghost. Regardless of how any of my future teams turn out, I think this one will always be one of my best. Not because of the team itself, but because of the sheer ingenuity in piecing it together. Yes, for once, I am tooting my own horn. With this video done, we're now a third of the way through the type chart. I've mostly touched on the less popular types thus far, and while the fan bases for those types have come out in full force, soon we'll be getting into the really exciting ones. I'm also slowly chipping away at the Pokémon I can potentially use, so it's going to get more difficult too. We'll see how I fare in the next one. Before you go, don't forget to do all the YouTube stuff, join my Discord, and let me know what your flying type team would be in the comments. Just like a Gen 4 team, I'm expecting a lot of Star Raptors. Anyways, as thanks for making it to the end of the video, here's a picture of my dog. Talk to y'all soon.